Okay, so first person controller tutorial. We're going to be remaking this program right here. Shouldn't take this long to load. It's because of the recording software. So just first person controller, last movement. Very simple stuff. Got it all right here, already set up. So the first thing we want to do is make a new unsaved file. We're going to want some variables like X resolution, Y resolution. So this is just going to set up. It's going to be an 800 by 600 screen. Um, the center X is X resolution times 0 0.5. So we do multiplication because multiplication is faster than division for computers. So the center X is 800 times 0 0.5, 400. Y resolution center X is going to be 300. And the screen mode is 2 and then blitz 3D. That means it's going to be a window and not scalable. Because scalable causes issues with blitz 3D. Alright, so now the graphics 3D function is a built in blitz 3D function that just, you know, makes a window. So the window is going to be X resolution, 800, Y resolution, 600, 0 is the color palette, like the color mode. So most computers are like 32-bit color. It has like over 2 billion colors, it's crazy. And that's just going to set it to default. And then the screen mode is 2, which is the window. And then set buffer back buffer. It's going to make it so that every time you run update world and render world, it's going to draw like everything on the screen to the back buffer so it's not going to be displayed and that helps with like flickering makes it not flicker so then next we're going to let's see what's important right now what's important right now is that uh, we make a while loop just so that we see what this does so while not key hit one key hit is just whenever you press a key it triggers key hit or key hit reads that and one is the scan code for the escape key so then we can go update world which performs all the calculations you've like set up render world which draws everything to the back buffer and then flip and flip moves the back buffer to the front buffer and the front buffer is what you actually see then you can w end, which closes off the while loop, and then end, which terminates the program. Nope. Actually hit the delete key. So you have to save in order to run it. So we're gonna save this as demonstration dot bb. Run it. It's just gonna make a window. So next what we want to do is, according to our tutorial right here, let's make a cube. So copy that over here, just so I don't have to type it. So the cube, so when you create an object, you give it a tag. This right here can be absolutely anything you want it to be. It just has to be the same. So we make a we create a cube called cube and we position cube with position entity zero zero at zero on the x zero on the y five on the z and z is depth so that's like five in front and then we make the entity type two that's actually not important for right now because an entity type is what like defines collisions we don't have collisions yet but we also need a camera. So we're going to make a camera. In initialize. So we're going to create a camera. Name it camera. We're going to define a viewport as zero zero. That means it starts in the top left corner, coordinate zero zero, and it extends to X resolution and Y resolution eight hundred by six hundred. 
and the camera range is going to be 0.1, so that's where it starts drawing all the way to 150. So if you run this, you're going to see a cube in our defined camera space. So then next, we want to make a plane. Just add a plane to our map. With the function create plane, name it plane. Make it a nice green. This is RGB, 255 on a green. Position it negative 2 from where our camera is. Very cool. Now next we want um, some camera controls. So, we're going to define these variables, which we're going to use to make camera controls. So what we're going to want is last mouse x, last mouse y, current mouse x, current mouse y. And what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the last mouse y from the current mouse y. And the, we're just going to, and the current mouse x from the last mouse x to get the difference between like the center of the screen and where a mouse is to get like its movement. So... This is everything we need. So we're going to put this in our while loop. Okay, so what we're doing here, comment that for a second, is at the start of every the start of every cycle, we are getting where our mouse is, and we're storing it in the last mouse x and last mouse y. Then we're moving our mouse to the center of the screen, center x, center y, which we defined earlier as 400, 300. And then we are getting our current mouse x with these functions, mouse x, parentheses, mouse y, parentheses. And then over here, these, I'll comment those out for a second. Right here, we're, doing, we're saying turn entity camera on the x axis, that is the entity pitch minus the current mouse position and then zero on the y zero on the z axis so it's only turning on the x axis so if we run this you can see we can turn our mouse up and down and you see it jitters a little bit that's because when i move it it takes the position then it moves it to the center gets that subtracts and moves the camera by that amount then we can hit escape Okay, but you notice it doesn't have a clamp, all right? So when we add these, if entity pitch camera plus last mouse y minus mouse y is less than 40, and entity pitch camera plus last mouse y minus mouse y is greater than negative 40. So that's saying it cannot be uh, less than 40 or greater than negative 40. So you're going to constrain your camera movement to those um, 80 degrees. And that's the same like variables we got right here, less mouse x minus mouse y. So we're saying the same thing. It's adding this amount to the camera pitch to see if it fits in there. And that's just going to add some clamps. So you can't like turn yourself around, do some results. It stops right there. And you can add more. You can make it bigger. This is just to demonstrate. So then, we can also turn into D player. Okay, so the player is important because the pivot is important. Because if you don't have a pivot and you try to turn the camera on the X axis and the Y axis at the same time, um, you get some unwanted like roll and it's not fun. Doesn't look great. I can actually show it right now. Turn entity camera. On both axes. It's gonna roll around and act weird. What? Uh, that's right. It doesn't have an F in there. I just misspelled it. Don't worry about that. See? It turns all kinds of wonky ways. So what we want is to come up here to initialize. We're going to say player equals create pivot 
And a pivot in Blitz 3D is just a point in space that has like angles and stuff. So the player is just like a vector. And then we're going to make the camera a child of that pivot. So the camera shares rotational values of the player. So then we're going to turn the player on the Y axis instead. And so when we do that, it doesn't act wonky and we have light working camera controls. So then next what we want to do is we can just hide pointer. Hide pointer is a function you can run one time, one time only. And it just hides the pointer. That's always cool. So you can't see it, it looks a little bit nicer. So then next we can add some movement. Now this is like the most basic movement you can possibly get in Blitz. Usually what you want to do is you want to work out some velocity system or something, but this, you know, it works. So we can say, always comment your stuff. Movement. There we go. So if key down, key down, detects if you're holding a key down, key hit, only detects it like for one frame, key down, does it for over time. Scan code 17 is a W key. Move entity, player, move entity, um, moves it by this amount. So you want your entity to be moved, your X value, your Y value, and your Z value. In this case, W is going to move us 0 0.08 units on the Z axis, so that's forward. And then end if, and then we do the same kind of thing. 30 is the A key, so we're moving left, so minus on the X axis. 31 is the S key, so backwards, so negative 0 0.08 on the Z axis. 32 is D. So to the right, so 0 0.08 on the x axis, and then make sure to add an end if to each of these statements. And we can run this. We have movement, but no collision. So, collision in Blitz 3D is as simple as saying collisions. Okay, and then there's a couple of variables. There's source type, destination type, collision type, and I think two is ellipsoids, no three, is ellipsoids to polygons, and then two is full sliding collision, so one, two, three, two, for your collision variables is good. And so the first two numbers can be absolutely anything you want to because you can define them as anything. So we're going to make two, the cube. So entity type, cube, two. So the cube is now this number right here. This two. And then we're going to make player, one. Entity type, player, one. So the player is now the one in this collision. So collision simplex 3D, super simple. I am now colliding and sliding, as promised. Very cool. Thank you, Blitz. And then again, not necessary to know, but collisions are calculated on every update world. When you run update world, collisions are calculated. So that's just cool to know. And that's it. Hope you learned something, or maybe, I don't know.